Recently, we discussed the importance of having a will or a trust set up, or if you have one, updating them. And today, right. we have another topic that we think is very important to do before you're at the brink of a catastrophe or an emergency. <laughs> right. uh, always better to plan ahead than try to do it at the last minute. John? Yeah. Chances are we're all going to get sick uh, and have to go to the hospital, something like that long before we are terminally ill and have to die. Hmm. Um, but you never know. And, and our point today is update your medical power of attorney yeah. um, so that if you're in the hospital or you're in an emergency situation, somebody, your loved one, your wife, your best friend, whoever it is that you've designated can, can make those decisions for you, can speak for you, knows what you want, and we'll speak for you on your behalf, even though you may be incapacitated. Right. By the, by the way, just as a note, uh, to, to, to tell you why it's so important to have it, um, the uh, uh, one of the things that we're most familiar with in this area is called the do not resuscitate. And for a lot right. of people, if you're se severely ill, you don't want them to do like uh, prolonging procedures that might just leave you in a vegetative state. Not, for, for a lot of people, it's not good for them. It's certainly not good for the remaining family. And we recently had a very close friend uh, of uh, uh, over 60 years that uh, was at the brink of that decision point. And he had put a do not resuscitate thing in there. And people were looking around and they found it and they knew that he wanted that, but you know, are you sure? For him, he happened to be lucid enough at points where he was able to say, yes, I want you to enforce that DNR. But even if he was not conscious, they could have used that so that they, that because that was what his wishes were. And his son, who was an attorney, said, yeah, absolutely, that's what dad wants. So, yeah. uh, uh, and people don't fool around with that. If a medical institution has that, they're not going to resuscitate. Or you found out something that I didn't know about recently when you went in for a procedure or you were thinking about a procedure, John? I went in, I was in a hospital, relatively minor stuff, but they had me sign. They said, do you have a DNR? Do you have any any uh, orders, any medical mm. um, orders? I said, uh, no, I don't think so. They said, well, we need, we need not a DNR, which is do not resuscitate. We need a, get this, What's the name of it? It is a P O L S T. It's wow. physician's order for life sustaining treatment. Oh my God. Who knew? I wouldn't you have assumed, as I did, sure. that you go into the hospital, of course they're going to treat you and save your life. <laughs> no, no, no. They, apparently they need an order to do that, yeah. they need a signed order in advance. This goes through full treatment versus I can choose selective treatment. I can, can choose comfort-focused treatment. I can choose artificially administered nutrition long-term or less. Mm. Um, I, this is ridiculous, I think. But you've got to have one. Yeah, because, because the hospital they don't have the specific probably, order the to resuscitate. Probably... It's it's the opposite of a DNR. Yeah, because possible, the institutions, hospitals particularly, probably have been sued. Well, why did you keep this guy as a vegetable for seven months? I'm not paying for that. Okay. Right. Uh, and so I guess they came up with this piece of it, but I've never heard of it before. So in other words, if I, you have a DNR, I guess that is one way to do it. But if you might want to say, well, you know what? Don't do anything extraordinary. Keep me going as long as it makes some kind of sense. And that's that's really what this is. It's mm -hmm. it, you get to choose how much life sustaining treatment you really want. Right. Um, and as ridiculous as it sounds, because that ought to be the default. They now have paperwork for it. It's the lawyers getting involved in medicine. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you've got to be aware of it and you've got to know um, that it exists. Sign it if necessary, if that's what you want. But also you part of our caution for this video for you is. Don't forget to update these things. If you have a beneficiary or you have somebody who's going to make the, who has the medical power of attorney, make sure it's the right person. You know, you get divorced, you 
kids die, whoever the person you were assigned, you assigned to be your power of attorney, if it's changed, got to update it. Got to yeah. keep on top of this. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a living trust and you have all your paperwork filled out and you don't have a DNR because you're 60 years old and you're healthy, you're still skiing, skydiving, scuba diving, whatever you're doing, you're really in, in the prime of health. And all of a sudden, you get a terrible disease like Lou Gehrig's disease. Well, you might want a DNR where you hadn't thought about it before. Oh, no. Right. Keep me going as long as you can. But you may change your mind uh, yeah. uh, at some point. And if you don't update it, then unless you have a medical power of attorney, and hopefully that person will fulfill your wishes. But the only way you could absolutely make sure that they're either going to give life sustaining or partial life sustaining up to a point or do not resuscitate is to update, make sure it at yeah. maybe once a year, just take a quick look and say, does this still represent how I feel? Yeah. And by the way, last point, make sure that the people you designate as your power, medical power of attorney or your representative, make sure they know that mm. they're your representative and they have a copy of it. Right. Don't don't rely on the medical system and the doctors and the nurses and the hospitals to find the right paperwork. Make sure your you and your representative have it handy. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.